person interested in football and soccer, it's highly likely you've seen or heard about Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso, a quirky collegiate American football coach, was first introduced to us a few years ago in a few TV spoofs when NBC secured the broadcast rights to the English Premier League here in the U.S. In 2020, the unassuming, soccer-naive, comedic sketch character came to life in his own hit show. Hello, everyone. This is Rev Brad, and you're listening to the Soccer Chaplains United podcast from The Touchline. As a football chaplain of some 20 years, I thought I would share some lessons from Ted Lasso. Now, just a quick caveat. I've listened to a couple things about Ted Lasso, namely uh, some of the influences and resemblances from John Wooden's coaching philosophy. I know about some of those things, but I've purposely stayed away from listening to too much of the commentary around the show, other than a Brene Brown podcast with show actors and producers Jason Sudeikis and Brendan Hunt. I don't want to over-spiritualize or idolize Ted Lasso, but I do want to offer a chaplain's view into some of the positive pieces from what we see on the screen that I believe are largely missing from the game and sorely, sorely needed. So whether you're an athlete, a coach, a staffer with a beautiful game, I think this series will be fun, creative, and have a little bit of everything for everyone around the game. One other note, I'm recording a bunch of these episodes so that during busy points in the MLS season, there can still be a weekly podcast, even if I can't get a guest or have a particular topic. So if you're listening regularly, when you hear the Ted Lasso theme music at the start of the pod, you can go ahead and skip forward to the two and a half minute mark and skip this intro and our typical podcast theme roll. Thank you for listening to the From the Touchline podcast. Here we go with a lesson from Ted Lasso. Just a little off foot, thinking he's going to go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post, almost made him in, and they have. He has the hat trick. The second in his career. The third of the night. The hat trick hero. Talked about you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of pressure. To the corner. Goes towards the near post. And you're the angle, and what a goal! What a goal! Episode 1, Lesson 2. So really early on, we learn a little bit about Ted Lasso's club, AFC Richmond. This fictional team is set to play in the Premier League, England's top league, but we get the sense that they're in danger of relegation and going down to a lower division. We also know that the team owner, Rebecca, has taken over the team as a result of a nasty divorce from her husband, and she's determined to run the club aground. In one of the early scenes, we watch as Lasso and Rebecca walk down the hallway and discuss the club's long but modest history. Rebecca recounts the stadium being used during the war as a medical camp for soldiers, and they talk about the ghosts that still haunt the pitch. And then she and Lasso pause on the wall, honoring the former club owners. Lasso comments on a guy in a picture, surrounded by girls and holding a bottle of champagne. He says, he looks like he's having a good time. Truth is, it's Rebecca's ex-husband, and he's become known as a bit of a philanderer. Lasso quickly backtracks. Not all good times are good times. Well, from this important little exchange between Lasso and Rebecca, there's this truth that resonates. History matters. History is important. And oftentimes in football, there's a tension and a clash because one's personal history can often collide with a club or organization's history. And to reiterate Lasso on that point, Not all good times are good times. History matters. History is important. Now, some different thoughts come come to mind about history. We've probably all heard the age-old axiom that those who do not learn from the past are doomed to repeat it, or something similar to that. We, We might even agree with Cicero, the Roman philosopher, who once said, not to know what happened before one was born is always to be a child. We might even have some strong feelings on the writing of history or some of the modern movements around revisionist histories. But history is important. And knowing a history is important because that history continues to work and wind and weave its way through a person or even through an organization. I've served the Colorado Rapids as volunteer chaplain for 20 years. And I worked for the club for almost two years prior to that. So in the club's 26-year history, I've missed uh, maybe about four years in total. Four years of not being in some way connected to the club more than just being a fan. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a lot of history to to have, to be part of. And as a PR staffer, I actually had to know the previous history and, and I had to convey it to different journalists and media. And really, that was helpful for my work today as a chaplain. 
But we hold something important when we hold or know someone's or some thing's history. As Lasso learns the history of the club and of its owner, Rebecca, he holds a bit of sacred treasure there because there are pains, there are sins, there are failures, there are even ghosts, if you will, that are associated with the past. And Lasso can now begin to navigate those things as he knows and understands them. You know, sin and past failings, whether intentional or unintentional, those things in history play havoc for a long time, especially when they go unchecked. Histories continue to be repeated when no one is willing to stand up against evil or wrong. In Deuteronomy 5.9, God says that the sins of the parents have ripple effects to the third and fourth generations. David, King David, writes in Psalm 51 that his past sin was always before him. His history haunted him. But only God, and he knew this, only God can change and transform his sin. Only God can redeem his story, his history. I was reflecting on the sense of history and a a Russian proverb struck me. It says this, dwell in the past and you'll lose an eye. Forget the past and you'll lose both eyes. Well, maybe today, like David, like Rebecca, like me, like most of the world of football, you need to be freed from your history. Maybe you need to get unstuck. You need to be redeemed from the ghosts of the past. Don't ignore that history. And ask God to do a work in you to help cleanse the sins of the past so you might move forward into a new future. Don't forget, history, your history, is important. Well, thanks for listening to this lesson from Ted Lasso. This is Reb Brad coming to you from the Touchline.